Hi, I'm Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council with your weekly Anglican Perspective. Yesterday at an event sponsored by the Evangelical Alliance, the Archbishop of Canterbury responded to a question about whether he would have voted against uh, the gay marriage bill if given another opportunity. And this is what he said. So yes, I'm, I, I, I would, if the same thing happened again, I would vote the same way as I did then. But I'm continuing to think and listen very carefully as to how in our society today we respond to what is the most rapid cultural change in this area that there has been, uh, well, I don't know if ever, but for a very long time. And we've seen changes in the idea about sexuality, sexual behaviour, which simply um, we have to face the fact that the vast majority of people under 35 think not only that what we're saying is incomprehensible, but also think that we're plain wrong and wicked. The Archbishop of Canterbury is facing a rapid and accelerating change in the culture on human sexuality where people under the age of 35 feel that what the church has been teaching in terms of traditional marriage and family values is not only wrong but wicked. And as a leader, he has not decided how to respond to that yet. Well, clearly there are a couple of ways that he could respond. There are several options. One, as a leader, he could simply uh, continue to proclaim uh, the gospel of Jesus but refuse to talk about sexuality altogether and remain positive and uh, avoid anything that might even smack of homophobia or being negative. That's one possible response. Another response would be to uh, really to uh, uh, compromise a bit on church standards but to go ahead and approve same-sex blessings of same-sex couples within the Church of England. Certainly there's a lot of talk about that. Neither of those approaches fits with what the Bible says a Christian leader should do under similar circumstances in a culture where, as Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, a time comes when men do not put up with sound doctrine, but rather to suit their own desires, gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Now, Paul says, Timothy, when you're facing that as a Christian leader, this is the response you need to make from 2 Corinthians 4. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. What Paul is saying is that Christian leaders in the face of such changes and departures from biblical norms and culture need not to run away from it or compromise, but rather to boldly proclaim the truth. Do it lovingly, do it patiently, do it without anger or homophobia, but also call people to repentance. Don't sugarcoat the truth, speak it clearly. In this case, give the biblical vision for what marriage and family should be and promote it. Be an opinion leader as the Archbishop of Canterbury, as great former archbishops like William Temple were in English society, not an opinion follower.